Now, this month, the province is ramping up its more targeted approach to vaccinating those hot spots. But are all of their decisions made based on science? Dr. Jeff Kwong is a program leader at the ICES. His team collecting all of that data and the positivity rates, as you hear us tell you about every single day when it comes to those hot spot regions. And he joins me now. Dr. Kwong, good morning to you. Good morning. You know, a lot of people uh, are looking at this data, right? And we are starting to see the, the vaccines, 50% going to these hot zones. But I want to bring up a chart here uh, provided by ICES when we look at positivity rates. So if you could help us explain what we're looking at. Peel region, as we know, the positivity rate is high. So 18.7, but I believe that's likely higher in, in Brampton when you look at it specifically, yes? That's probably right, yeah. I mean, our, the breakdown we use is just we use the public health unit. Uh, which includes Brampton, Caledon, and Mississauga. But uh, probably it is higher for Brampton alone, yes. And the week that we're looking at there specifically is April 18 to the 24th. Um, p potentially we're seeing a bit of a change here. The allocation, the reallocation of these vaccines this week and next, going to these hot zones, do you think this is going to make a big difference? I do, because this is where the fire is burning the hottest. So that's why we, where we want to direct our most resources as quickly as possible. So we want to try to get as many people vaccinated in the hot spots. And, you know, it leads to a slight delay for other areas of the province, but it's only by a couple of weeks. And so if we can, you know, hopefully break the back of the pandemic by vaccinating as many people in these hot spots, I think it'll really bring the cases down um, as quickly as possible. Overall, it'll lead to fewer numbers of cases, fewer numbers of hospitalizations and deaths by using this hot spot strategy. Dr. Kwong, we get a lot of questions here and concerns as well about people who've maybe received that one dose and feel invincible. Unfortunately, we still see people hospitalized after that one dose. What do you say to those who have received one and waiting on two when it comes to their day to day? Yeah, I mean, I think especially in that first two weeks after getting the vaccine, we know the body is still developing the antibodies against the virus, you have to be, you need to just continue to act as if you've not been vaccinated. So you have to keep doing, the, you know, wearing the mask, uh, you know, physical distancing, hand washing, all of that stuff. You have to keep doing that, you know, after the first dose, because we know the vaccine effectiveness after one dose is lower than after two doses. And so, you know, after two doses, it's, you know, 90 something percent. But after one dose, you know, I've seen different estimates. It could be lower, you know, maybe 60 percent, 70 percent, you know, maybe 80 percent. And it, it may also differ depending on your age. So if you're older, or if you have a chronic conditions, you should be especially uh, careful um, and act as if you have not yet been vaccinated. Dr. Kwong, obviously you follow the data as you are part of the science advisory table that, that looks at what the province should be doing, or at least giving the advice to what the province should be doing. Should any of the eligibility be changing with the vaccine rollout? Do you see anything happening over the next couple of weeks that could be tweaked? No, I think like right now, you know, now that we're adopting the hotspot strategy more um, intensely, I think that's going to be a good move. I think that will uh, help us uh, reap dividends in the coming weeks. Um, so I think we just need to stay the course and just try to get as many vaccines in arms, you know, as possible in the, you know, this during the month of May. It's, it's you know, I think the biggest uh, factor is vaccine supply. And so now that we're getting more doses in the coming weeks, I think that's great. And we just need to work all out to vaccinate. I'll probably be vaccinating at a pop up clinic uh, later this week. I, I spent Saturday um, at, the, at Jane and Finch uh, vaccinating as many people as possible. Yeah, and thank you for all the work that you're doing. And unfortunately, we continue to see these lineups and these pop-up clinics, which we need, the, the, as many as we possibly can, as many shots into arms. Uh, we get this question, I think, every single day, and whether or not any restrictions might get lifted in the coming weeks if vaccination is going well. Do you anticipate anything, any restrictions being lifted, looking at the science? Um, yeah, I hope not, actually, because I think we need to, you know, bring the cases down as far as, uh, as we can before we relax any restrictions. I think we made that mistake already, you know, with the second wave. I think we uh, relaxed the restrictions too quickly, and then that quickly led to the third wave. Um, so I think it's going to be some time where about roughly, um, you know, 40 percent of the adult population who've been vaccinated. I think we were, ab were able to vaccinate somewhere between 5 and 10 percent each week. So until we get to 70 or 80 percent of the adult population being vaccinated, I think um, it, it will be dangerous if we relax the restrictions too quickly. So I think we just everyone just needs to hang tight for a little bit longer. 
Um, I think things will be better by around Canada Day. Um, so I think it's, you know, the question is whether it's before or after Canada Day before we can uh, significantly uh, relax restrictions. Okay, Dr. Kwong, appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Take care. Take care of yourself. 7-Eleven is what we're sitting at right now. We're over to Dina and said Canada Day. That's what we're hoping for, guys. I'll take it. <laughs> take what <laughs> we can get, Mel. I'll take it right now. Same. Mel, thank you very much.